Welcome everyone to another What's New in Dynatrace. We are covering 278 today. This is our way to tell you and walk through the release notes and tell you what's new in the Dynatrace world. Uh, as always, Berkan, thank you so much for doing this. How are you doing? Hi everyone, it's me again. I'm Den Mas. Thanks, Andy. And you? All good, all good. I'm really looking forward to 278 because we just walked through some of the announcements before we started the recording button and there's a lot of cool new things. Berkan, let's jump right into it. Let's go to the next slide. It's a quick reminder. Uh, what we always do is, uh, this is what you're going to learn today. We will cover a little bit of the playground environment, then the product updates, and then giving you some additional resources on communities and so on. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Please don't forget that we have a Dynatrace playground tenant. Uh, Berkan, I think you're also using mainly the playground tenant these days to demo yes, all the stuff live. Yeah. So Playground is really good. Uh, everybody that has a Dynatrace account can access that Playground tenant. And if you don't yet have an account, you can just sign up for a Dynatrace trial. Use that bit.ly link on the top left. And that's it. And on the bottom, there's just a couple of more tutorials that uh, we've created uh, over the last couple of months. And uh, you will find them as well pointing to the Playground tenant. All right. But I think uh, that's it all from me. Berkan, I think you take us into the release updates. Okay, thanks, Andy. Let's start. Perfect. So, for the ones who are not familiar uh, with our session, let me briefly go through the new features we introduced in the latest version. And we do this uh, for every two weeks as we roll out the new version automatically on our clusters every two weeks. In this session, we are speaking about this 278 version updates. And I will show you quickly the documentation and what exactly that features we see here. Um, so let's start one by one, and then I will also open it in the environments. Okay, first, we have a new documentation design that uh, I would like to mention. Now we are separating the SaaS and Manage that with this own unique URLs. As you see here, it's the general documentation. Actually, you will also see some managed information, of course, but maybe the also important part to mention is the managed specific documentation you are going to see starting with this version. And with this way, we will have our strato uh, design system with the new documentation. And uh, for the managed one, it's important to know that it, it will not be indexed by public search engine. No, and you need to use Dynatrace Search instead, just for information. If you need more details, if you need to talk with our product managers, please check this community post for more details. The next one is uh, with the log monitoring. It's a minor naming change. As you see here, these are the old menu item names. We had our uh, settings, and now these are the new names under log monitoring. If you'd like to see, from the environment, please go to settings application and under this log monitoring section, you will see the new names, some of the examples that are already listed in the tenants. The next one is about ownership for Kubernetes entities. Now you can use annotation annotations as you used before the labels. It will be helpful for you to create context, extra additional details team details about your resources. And it is going to uh, be useful for you to make it clear whom you should, that your users should contact it, the questions that issues change related to your resources that you can address uh, in a clear way. And also you can uh, use this for your automation needs. You can perform actions on ownership information. Another example that uh, you will be able to use these annotations to integrate with third-party systems. For example, tricking systems or monitoring tools might be uh, useful for you to route your alerts or notifications by using these annotations as of this version. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, I think, that pretty useful update we have on the infrastructure capabilities. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Berkan, to add to this, we had the ownership feature already on services uh, and, uh, and other components. So ownership is really important, as you said, <clears throat> because Dynatrace cannot only display this in the UI, but we can also use this for automation purposes, routing problems, for instance, 
we're sending reports to the people that own particular components. And uh, one of the things that I've also learned with our users, it's also great to then say, hey, show me all of the workloads, show me all of the services that belong to my team. And you can do this as well because we can query our entity model and then say, show me everything where that my team is owning. So that's also a nice use case. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Maybe one uh, small point here. Uh, the special characters that should be available it's soon. Maybe it's already available. I haven't used this at uh, annotations specifically, but for also for the labels that it will be possible to use special characters. So in case you see error, you have an error, just please wait a little bit. And then I think you are, you are good to go mm -hmm. after that. Okay, so with OS service monitoring policies, as you see, we also introduce the custom metadata rule scope conditions. One example we have here, this condition is the product, oh, sorry, the production that equals production condition, which means that it use the exact metadata, this information, this production information here, and match with the host uh, video and use it in your OS service monitoring policies. So this is briefly one example. If you need more details, please go to this documentation. I will also show you from the UI how you reach this specific setting. Perfect. So before jumping on the platform section, let's go to the environment documentation and mention quickly um, by navigating it's uh, to root the features and documentation, of course. So as I mentioned that this is the part, this is the version we are talking in this version and uh, the 278. And on the left side, you are going to find the Dynatest components in case you need more specific details about those components. But for on this session, we are only focusing on these new features and enhancements just for information. If I continue with the announcements, this is the new documentation design. As you see here, this is again for SaaS or for general documentation, I would say. And for Manage, we will have a specific section on the top left of the page you can see directly here. Let's close these bars. With infrastructure, there is only one thing I want to show you, the custom metadata information, as I mentioned. To reach this page, please go to your settings application. And from settings, it is available under monitoring. You will see OS services monitoring. When you click on add policy, there will be some fields that we need to add or and switch to toggles. But the part is inter we are interested in is the detection rules. If I click add rule button here, and here you will see the new role scope available for host custom metadata. So as I said, we used it equal production in this case, but these are the all possibilities that you can see as an example and the logic operations and so on. So that's briefly that you uh, you have the option to use. That's super powerful because now with rules, you can specify what level of observability you want on hosts that are in certain environments or that owned by certain people because the metadata is I think the uh, the documentation also says uh, it goes on anything. So these 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 rules will be evaluated against anything that Dynatrace captures your environment variables, your names, um, all the metadata we we extracting. That's really cool. Yeah, very powerful. Great. Okay. So let's continue with the platform features. Uh, with this version, we introduced new functions. As you see here, so there are three functions we have, and I will only show you one example in demo environments. We use these, for example, that's uh, xx hash functions at to uh, how can I say that it is it will help you to define a fast non cryptographic algorithm. So here, for example, when you use this uh, this function, it you will be able to compare the hashed value and compute the hash value. This way, you will understand if data has been altered or corrupted. So there are, I think, that four different uh, algorithms that we have these functions, and two of them are available as a function for us. This one, I think, as far as I see, that it's for also for data integrity, but not suitable for security-related applications. 
And uh, I'm not the expert in this area, of course, but if you need more details, please reach out to our team. Please uh, talk to our artist one team in chat or add your comments in this uh, in the video so that we can share more details with you. Another uh, update we have, change when events have been introduced to a GA version, I'm sorry, that, uh, for this uh, release. And these events are useful for you to generate a vulnerability uh, events which are undergoes a status or assessment change. Here you see that some of the fields will give you this hint and we see the event status, event status transition, vulnerability resolution status, and uh, I hope that it is readable right now, but it, if it is not, it's not important because we will also have an example of the environment. Uh, briefly, we now introduce this event type. Another one is that state reports. So these state reports allows you to view the historical state of a vulnerability or affected entity. In this example, we see the environmental context, as you see affected entities, related entities information, including uh, the impact of the entities on the, in, the, in the environment. And uh, we have an example directly here where you can explore in our playground environments. If you need more details, you can click on this and see directly from there. And also as a reminder, thanks for all the links, uh, Berkan. On YouTube, I will add the links to the description of this video. And for those of you that are watching this on Dynatrace University, uh, you will also get the slides there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. I think there is nothing that I would like to add here. There are lots of parameters. As you see, there are lots of fields, lots of uh, parameters that you can use your, for your customized queries. So it is, I think it will be that useful for you to at least understand what's going on that with those events. And please also check the documentation by clicking this link. You will find lots of information about the different event types in our security area. The next one that we have a new out of the box templates for security data analysis and reporting. Here is the one screenshot is we see and it is it will be populated automatically just one click in third party vulnerabilities application. I will also show you the templates in the playground environments. This looks pretty useful to be honest. So it's pretty brilliant actually and uh, we will explore the details, details of the queries in a minute. Let's see if we have another thing in security. Yes, we have only one. Also additional updates. You might remember we introduced the set uh, tracking links uh, in one of our previous versions for the remediation items. Now these actions are available uh, in bulk. As you see, there are three or four that's, uh, process groups that I used and you can set now tracking links for all of them at one place. Perfect. So um, let's go quickly. Let's go quickly that we have the platform. I'm going to close these parts. Okay. So first, as I mentioned, this is the new one of the new decal functions. So this function returns at 32 bits for a given string expression. In this case, it is hashing the value of the test field using XXH32 hash algorithm. And here is the result that you can see in this query. The next one is the vulnerable to change events, as I mentioned. So in this query, I am fetching all the events and applying filters based on the event kind, which is security events and event type. In this case, status change events. If you see the details, as I said, there are lots of possibilities. You can get, uh, you can customize your queries can understand what's going on with those events, or you can build relationship with several conditions, several entities in your whole environment. And this status change events focuses on the part with the specific uh, events and the actions. For example, if I see like event status gives me the hint again, the transition, which means that this problem is opened again. Yes, I can see the description here. This 
SV status has changed to open. So briefly, there was a status change, event change, and now we are listing this under this uh, event type. And you can, of course, see lots of details about this Vanderbilt as well. Cool. And it's also great because this is a notebook that you share or that we share on the uh, playground tenant. So folks, if you do not yet have application security enabled on your tenant, but you want to see what type of events we are creating every time when the vulnerability status changes, you can play around here in that notebook and see what type of data we generate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, all, all the previous versions are available as still as notebooks. So mm -hmm. if you need, you can also watch the previous recordings and see what type of notebooks that we have. The state reports events, the same logic, I'm fetching all the events, applying a filter based on the event kinds and state report events. So in this example, as I mentioned, we give you more information about the environmental context and related fields. In this case, these are affected entities, related entities, as you see. So all this also the topology correlation that we have. And it gives you the wider explanation of wider impacts on the entities of your environments. With this way, you can see the full historical status data of this vulnerability or an affected entity. Mm -hmm. Really powerful security capabilities now that we are creating those events. Cool. So the out of the box dashboards, as I mentioned in the presentation, uh, this is available for all our users within the third party vulnerabilities application. To reach this dashboard or to create this dashboard, you just need to go third party vulnerabilities application here. Let's click on this. And then at the bottom, you will see open with button. That's just a small button. And when you choose the destination as dashboards, here you will see the template, trade exposure template. It's available automatically. And then after you click this, it will pop up automatically. I'm not uh, create a new dashboard because we already have it and ready for this example. And it's already shared in the presentation. You can also click on the link and access this dashboard directly. If I open this dashboard and let's see the details together. So as you see, now it's loading a little bit. Perfect. It's for last two hours, as you see. And we are applying lots of that, uh, conditions here and query details and variables that are available as far as I see. And see, for example, if I click on one of the dashboard tiles and open the side panel on the right side, you will understand in more details that how powerful it is because we automatically apply these filters, apply this, that's, uh, these conditions, and run this query. And here, for this dashboard tile, we show specifically most severe open vulnerabilities. And this, all these details, you will be able to understand that what we used to um, create this result to fetch this data. And also, you can, of course, customize it based on your specific needs. So this is applicable for all other dashboard tiles that you will be able to see once you explore this dashboard example. If I go down a little bit, I see on the right side the impact on the environment and how many processes are affected, how many process groups are affected, and hosts. We have a risk analysis section here. You see that the data is loading here. And there are no data for now because it's for the last two hours. If you extend the time frame, I think you will have more examples here. You will see the vulnerabilities by Davis assessments and understand that based on the type of this vulnerability, if it's public exposure or not, which functions are in use, and it is possible to understand from the dashboard directly. If I go details, it is still that there are lots of the different data and results set analysis, you will be able to get out of the box. And I think so the I cool, the that's, cool, that's, that's brilliant. Yeah. yeah, and I think the cool thing is, <clears throat> because you showed the query earlier, basically this is a dashboard that uses those two events that you have highlighted earlier that we, that application security is creating these events. And now this is a great way to see, you know, how you can actually analyze and slice the dice this particular data because it, it, it analyzes exactly those events. 
those state change events, those vulnerability uh, status events. Yeah, it's really cool. Okay. I think that's okay for this one. Uh, so let's go with the next one. I will not make that that's all details. Just like to show you that you for uh, the tracking links and setting tracking links in bulk, as I mentioned, you can access this menu from third party vulnerabilities application again. And if you choose one of them, it will be available under process group overview. Once you choose, have multiple selection, it will pop up automatically button and then you just need to click on set tracking links and that's all for this functionality mm -hmm. so instead of doing it one by one we can now do bulk updates to external tracking tools perfect mm -hmm. okay the last one is the unified service failure count so we have a unified services introduced recently this is a service type based on spans and built with cloud native and open telemetry in mind provides to agent plus uh, support for data from ingestion APIs. That's why that there are DDU consumption some metrics, but with this specific metric, it will no longer consume DDUs for information. So I think that's the, the last update we have. And finally, please share your feedbacks, resources, opinions with us, help us to improve the content, the way of that we present. And please always check our resources in university to train yourself, understand different use cases from different customers. And as always, please use this live in that uh, product assistance chat where you can reach out to our Dynatas one team and get help with all of your questions easily in a couple of minutes. That it's already embedded in the platform. As you see, that's uh, this image. Of course, this with the new design, it's different, but it's, I think mm -hmm. you will be able to find it easily. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, thank you, Berkan, for doing this. Um, I'm sure we will be back in the next couple of weeks with the next update, and then it's going to be 279. Thank you. And... Thank you. Thank you for our comments, Andrea. Yeah, yeah. And thank you, and all the best. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Bye -bye.